Welcome to Ask GCN Anything, the show where we take your burning cycling questions, queries and problems and then hopefully give you some relevant answers. Well, first up we have this from Walter Ferguson. He asks, what's the hardest GCN video you've ever filmed from a physical perspective? What's yours, Dan? Right, well, I'm not sure what you're going to say, Matt, but I know it won't be the same as me because this video I did just with Lasty. We'd gone on an overnight flight over to Abu Dhabi. We then drove two hours, in which time the temperature gauge on the car went from 38 up to 45. We then unpacked our bikes and built them up in a car park with no shade, then went straight up the climb. It was truly epic, and it's the epic Jabel Hafiz climb, a day I will never forget. It's like an oven. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> it's hot. I think it's the other way, Dan. Oh. Well, at the start of the climb proper, you'll see a red sign saying nine kilometres, wind road. Or maybe it's wind road. Either way it's apt, but you've got a pretty strong headwind and we can see the bends coming up in front. Funny you should say that, Dan, because the hardest video I've ever filmed was also with Lasty. Bit of a theme there, but basically I drove all the way through the night from England across to France, then drove to Ghent, rode all day long and did pretty much every single sector of Paris Roux Bay in this video. How to ride the cobbles, often trying to hold on to Lasty's wheel. Hitting the pavé fast isn't necessarily the best idea for the uninitiated. So don't ride into your first section at full gas. You'll need to be relaxed and this isn't going to be easy if you're unsure of what's coming up. Start steadily and as your confidence increases, gradually increase your speed and you'll soon see the benefits that riding faster over the cobbles brings. Your position on the bike shouldn't change too much, but try and put your weight towards the back of the bike and sit towards the back of the saddle. And you'll see the pros riding on the tops like this, which has the effect of putting you into that position. It's time for the rapid fire round. We're straight in with a question from Joshua Lim. Matt, just how do you run over any of those things? Now he's referring to me asking a question that was asked last week about running over different sorts of animals. Now, was it a collision? Was the squirrel okay? That's the oddest thing I've heard all day. Unfortunately, the squirrel ran out. He was a little bit injured. The sheep that I hit, I went off the side of the road into a field and hit a bystanding sheep. The sheep was absolutely fine, but the pigeon I hit at very, very high speed, unfortunately, is no more. Accident. Very interesting. Right, next question from box E to 406. Do you ever hate riding? Uh, I wouldn't say I hate it, but I don't particularly like riding when it's wet. I didn't like riding when it was wet when I was a pro, either training or racing, and I still don't like it now. So if I can choose not to, then I won't. But sometimes, as you can see on that video there, we do have to ride in the wet still to bring you fantastic videos. That, for example, is top 10 tips for riding in the rain. Yeah, I've the same answer as Dan, really. I was never a big fan of riding in the cold and wet conditions. A bit sketchy. I didn't go particularly well physically, but what I did like was getting back home and basking in the warm afterglow of a training ride. Okay, question in from Sam Hendon. When did you guys actually start training properly and aspiring to be pros? Well, for me personally, I started racing at 14, but I wouldn't say I started training properly, i.e. writing down a training plan and trying to stick to it and get it better as a rider as opposed to just riding until I was 17, which is reasonably late these days, I think. Pretty similar answer for me. I started riding at about 15 or 16 years of age, but it wasn't until I was 17 that I started racing properly, and that was when the seed was sown in relation to me wanting to be a pro, so pretty much the same as Dan. Hmm. David Howell asks, I get flats quite regularly when I'm out riding. How do I stop getting them? Uh, well, there's a few possible answers to this. Firstly, you want to make sure that your tyres aren't too worn. That can lead to thorns, etc., getting through far easier. Uh, the type of roads that you ride on will also make a fairly big difference. There's a lot of gravel, there's a lot of hedge cutting, for example, you are far more likely to get a puncture. Again, if you haven't got quite enough air in your tyres you, and you're quite heavy, you might well get more pinch flats than you should do. But take a look at your tyres first and foremost, and if after all of that you're still getting a lot of punctures, you can try some uh, tyre liners. That's something I did quite successfully one winter with very few punctures, even if you do have a little bit more rolling resistance and rotating weight. Definitely worthwhile, I think. Now, Doran Jackson asked an interesting question. Will we see any top cyclocross riders move across or switch over to the road? Who, why, and where would they excel? 
hypothetically. Good question. Uh, yeah, well, we have seen riders recently excel on the roads. Denik Stieber, former world cyclocross champion, now very successful with Etix Quickstep. Lars Bone was a world champion in cyclocross and is now successful with Astana out on the road. And Matty van der Poel himself, where well, he was a junior world champion on road and on cyclocross at the same time. So he obviously is going to be able to do both at one time. In terms of where they excel, well, it's things like Paris-Roubaix, Strada Bianca maybe, or even a Tour of Flanders, anything where bike handling is a key skill to have for the race and there's short, punchy accelerations that are needed. Yeah, and to finish off that question, current World Cyclocross Champion Wout Van Aert has hinted he'd certainly like to ride Paris-Roubaix and the Tour of Flanders in the future. Yeah, that's something that I would definitely like to see. Me too. Our next question comes in from Colin Clements, who says, how do I pack a shirt so it's wrinkle-free for a day in the office, and which GCM presenter is the best at commute packing? Well, it might be me. Uh, it's a great question there from Colin. Well, I used to commute to work all the time, and on each occasion, I needed a freshly pressed shirt, and this is what I used to do. Rucksack, magazine, thick stock, shirt, two bags, we're going for the double bagging. Spread out your shirt, button it all the way down, fold, then get your magazine, slide it underneath, get bag one, in she goes, and tie it up with double bagging. In your rucksack, and away you go. So it's dry, and when you get to work, it'll be nice. And neatly folded. Our final question on this week's Ask GC and Anything comes in from Daniel McColl, who says, Has Matt Stevens ever been mistaken for Roger Daltrey of The Who? Uh, I haven't actually been mistaken for Roger Daltrey looks wise, but after we put this next video out, I did get asked to front quite a few Who covers bands, which uh, I do quite often at weekends. Uh, top 10 things not to wear. People try to put us down, talking about my generation, just because we get around. The image of the Who's Roger Daltrey on stage, rocking double denim, is an iconic one that should not be tainted by trying to replicate it on a bike. My generation, baby, my generation, my generation, baby. Don't forget, if you'd like to ask us a question, just use the hashtag TalkBack on most forms of social media. Definitely. Now, if you haven't yet seen Cavendish's five sprint tips, which gave us a uh, Dubai tour, it's just up there. And the how to wash a bike with Team Sky, helped a little bit by Dan Click, just down here. And subscribe, click there.